They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. House warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come home to Stanford. Good Foods Co-op. Barksbury Farm Market. Weisenberger Mill. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Guess who's in our country kitchen today? It's Dolly Hawkins, who lives right up the road. My neighbor. Practically neighbors, right? Yeah. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about something. We're gonna, we're gonna make your wonderful no-bake cookies. At one time, that was my favorite thing to eat in the world, and I already snuck a bite a minute ago over here, and it was really, really good. But I wanna bring something up. You look in our kitchen, and you see old-fashioned stuff. I like old-fashioned stuff. Now, you ought to love me to death. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Look here. Look here. I want you to tell me everything I've seen here has got a story. Tell me where this came from. Tell me a story about this. Oh, well, it came from my daddy. He always got up and made breakfast. And the first thing he would do when he'd get up was put the pot of coffee. Well, coffee. he wore out ones just like that one. This is his second one. Now, how much would he drink? Would he drink a whole pot? Oh, no. He wouldn't just like one or two cups? Well, just not over two. Would he get jittery if he drank more than that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's the, that's the thing. That's one thing I like about antiquity is as we look around our kitchen, it reminds me of the old days. And I remember as a kid, this is what kitchens looked like. You just it, tell, me, tell me a story about that blue and white pan up there. Well, I'd just like to see the dishes that was washed in. That was, that's what dishes were washed in. At your house? Oh, I imagine. <laughs> So a lot of dishes. I was, yeah, I <laughs> did you wash the dishes? I did them? a lot of them. So that's why you wanted it out of your house. You didn't want the reminder of it. Uh, no. And <laughs> the washboard. Mm -hmm. I've seen my mom bent over a lot of times. She's washing that. Washing. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll tell you what, people, do you think people are spoiled today? They couldn't live now like they did back there then. Now, what do you remember Christmases? What do you remember getting as a kid for Christmas? What, what's, your, what's your earliest memories of Christmas? I can remember a lot of things during the Christmas time. My dad, he wouldn't buy two or three bananas, he would go out and buy a whole stalk. And then oranges and apples. Now that was a treat. Uh, well, Man. we didn't get anything like that only at Christmas time. And uh, at uh, Christmas, why, we'd put out our pans. Instead of stockings, we had just a pan that you put out. Well, I'd get up the next morning, there'd be an apple and orange and banana and candy in it. What do you remember? What was, the, what was like the, I, the I, most fantastic gift you ever got? You thought, I can't believe I've got this. I got a dial and a little chair. Pretty good sized chair and pretty good sized dial. I've still got it. You've still got the dial? I still got the dial and I've got the chair. You appreciated things back there then because you didn't get them all every day of the week. All right, now, look what's staring at me over there. This is my favorite thing as a kid, and even now, no bake cookies. Now, is this a medium, easy, hard recipe? What, what would you call it? Well, it's no problem, no trouble. Let's make it. It's just one thing about it. You've got to have everything ready before you start. Have it all laid out for uh, you? Yes, I need a stick of butter. butter. That's a good way to start anything. Do you remember uh, 
shaking up butter as a kid or using churning butter? Tell me about it. Had to shake a jar till you shook your brains out. <laughs> Two cups of sugar. All right. I like where you Already going. measured out. All right. And your half a cup you of milk. Want this milk. on yet? And a minute. So you're, you're going to be putting everything in there, huh? Stir it all up good. You put it in a pan, but you don't throw it over your shoulder to see where it lands. <laughs> you stick it on the stove. You want to stir this up real good. Okay. You want to have it. Aha. Uh -huh. Three cups of oats. All right. And the way I do it, I put two spoons of cocoa in with the oats. So I just use two of these. You can put as much cocoa as you want in it, but I usually come up with that. Add your other cup. Oh, it does better if you mix your chocolate. Get one in the middle there. Yeah. You mix it all up together. Now you got to have you half a cup of peanut butter. You can use crunchy or you can use the smooth. Okay. You can turn it up a little bit now. Yeah, so it'll. Just so you get your butter and uh, your sugar melted before you count the time. Now, I, I throwed away quite a few cookies. No kidding. Yeah. So and it's one of those things. I wasn't doing it right or doing it the wrong way. And I smartened up. <laughs> I melt the butter. Yeah. Real good and the sugar before you start counting. And then you've got to let it come to a boil and a boil that you can't stir down. I let it boil about two minutes. And the trick is you want it boiling when you take it off, the, when you put your oats and things in it. I usually make them a day ahead of time because it usually takes a half a day or a day to farm mm. the real. To set up? Yeah. Now, were you telling me about that you had sheep and you'd bring the, the lambs in mm, in, in the wintertime? Set them, put them behind, them behind the drum stove. <laughs> Now, was that fun as a kid, being able to... Well, it was. Did you, I guess, and see now, those cute little things? Now, I feel sorry for the children that grow up in town. They'd have, they'll they never experience that. They have missed everything. Yeah. They don't see little calves being born. They don't see little chickens being born mm -hmm. or hatched. They, They're clueless about nature in the grand scheme of things sometimes. All they think about now sitting in front of the TV pushing the buttons. <laughs> I know it. Okay, turn her up. Turn it up? Mm -hmm. We're going to blast it now. Yeah. And like I say, you've got to let it boil hard. Here it goes. You're getting ready to start on the sides there. Did you turn your heat out? Turn it off? Yeah. Put your teaspoon of vanilla in. There's a chemical reaction, Dolly. <laughs> yeah. I had to run for my life. Put your peanut butter in it. Mm -hmm. See, it's still a boiling. Throw your oats in. And you're not, you're not gonna tell me that's all you gotta do. Oh, it smells good. Can I make a soup out of that, darling? Just eat it like that. <laughs> now, all you have to do is just put them out on your paper. You can make them big or little, whatever. You know, that was a mystery, mystery to me as a kid. I thought, how in the world do they make these magic, wonderful cookies? Mystery has been solved. Now, does, do you have to put them in the refrigerator? Or you just nope. let them set up out on the counter? How long does it take, generally? You let them set for a day or so? You just set them out here till tomorrow if you want to. Well. They won't be ready today. So just like that? You make them big or small. And you can come back and fancy them up and put candy on them if you want. And different it'll... Things. Like I say, it takes a while for them to firm up. Just put them on wax paper. Yep. Now, if you want to be fancy, you can put some stuff on them. If you don't want to be so fancy, you can just leave them plain. Man, oh man. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take the liberty to sample one of Dolly's creations. We're telling stories about Christmas's past and such. Let's visit with Kentucky's storyteller, Mr. Byron Crawford, a good friend of mine. You know Byron, isn't he a sweetie pie? Sure is. Here's Byron Crawford to read us a Christmas story.
Back in 1897, an eight-year-old girl in New York wrote to the New York Sun, the editor of the New York Sun newspaper, and asked this question, Dear Editor, I am eight years old. Some of my little friends say there is no Santa Claus. Papa says, if you see it in the sun, it's so. Please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus? Virginia O'Hanlon, 115 West 95th Street. Here's what the editor wrote back. Virginia, your little friends are wrong. They have been affected by the skepticism of a skeptical age. They do not believe except what they see. They think that nothing can be which is not comprehensible by their little minds. All minds, Virginia, whether they be men's or children's, are little. In this great universe of ours, man is a mere insect, an ant in his intellect, as compared with the boundless world about him, as measured by the intelligence capable of grasping the whole of truth and knowledge. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. He exists as certainly as love and generosity and devotion exist, and you know that they abound and give to your life its highest beauty and joy. Alas, how dreary would be the world if there were no Santa Claus. It would be as dreary as if there were no Virginias. There would be no childlike faith then, no poetry, no romance to make tolerable this existence. We should have no enjoyment except in sense and sight. The eternal light with which childhood fills the world would be extinguished. Not believe in Santa Claus? Well, you might as well not believe in fairies. You might get your papa to hire men to watch in all the chimneys on Christmas Eve to catch Santa Claus. But even if they did not see Santa Claus coming down, what would that prove? Nobody sees Santa Claus, but that is no sign that there is no Santa Claus. The most real things in the world are those that neither children nor men can see. Did you ever see fairies dancing on the lawn? Of course not, but that's no proof that they are not there. Nobody can conceive or imagine all the wonders there are unseen and unseeable in the world. You tear apart the baby's rattle and see what makes the noise inside, but there is a veil covering the unseen world which not the strongest man or even the united strength of all the strongest men that ever lived could tear apart. Only faith, fancy, poetry, love, romance can push aside that curtain and view and picture the supernal beauty and glory beyond. Is it all real? Ah, oh, Virginia, in all the world there is nothing else real and abiding. No Santa Claus? Thank God he lives, and he lives forever. A thousand years from now, Virginia, nay, ten times ten thousand years from now, he will continue to make glad the heart of childhood. So there are the no-bake cookies setting up, getting gloriously yummy. And you have, what's the name of this next recipe we're going to do? It's a pretzel salad. Pretzel salad. We're going to do pretzel salad with Dolly here in a minute. But first up, here's Frontier.
It's windy in Chicago The kids are out of school There's magic in Motown The city's on the move From Jackson, Mississippi Recently we had the grandkids to visit. Now we mess around down the house and we had to make some chili and I had some wonderful helpers. She's in charge of Christmas cheer, and Papa Bill is in charge of canned meats. Dolly is ready for recipe number two, and this is... Pretzel salad. I've never heard of pretzel salad, but I'm dying to try it. You might not like it. Oh, I would guarantee I'll like it. You made it, so it's gotta be good. Just start out with, like I say, I make them a day ahead, mm -hmm. so they'll be nice and cold. Well, yeah, crush them up. You just hit them two or three times like that and turn them over. That'll make a cup full. That's about, I use about 30 bite-sized pretzels. Okay. And then you heat your oven to 400. Then you use a stick of butter and you use a half a cup of sugar. Of course, melt your uh, butter and your sugar together. And then you pour it in a pan, something like that with sides to it. Right. And you bake it for seven minutes. And then after your seven minutes, put them in a platter or something like that to cool out. Right. Let them spread it out real good so they'll cool. But make sure you uh, bake, uh, stir them up several times so they won't stick together. And then you get ready for your salad. You use your cream cheese softened already. I can tell you've done this before. You're thinking a step ahead of the game. Every time I'm invited out to dinner or something, Aunt Dolly's got to take a pretzel salad mm -hmm. and an oatmeal cookies. So you stir this up real good. All right. You want it real soft. Put your half a cup of sugar in, which mm -hmm. I've already measured out. Now, the trick to it, you've got to stir that sugar real good in that cheese. So now you put your Cool Whip in. 
a whole a whole thing of Cool Whip. It's Christmas time. We do what we want. Sugar, butter. We gotta have we gotta have a break from healthy eating every now and then, right, Dolly? That's for sure. It's Christmas. You won't tell on me. I won't tell on you. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that smells good. You got to stir this all up good. No calories in here, right, Dolly? Not one. Zero calories. I took them all out. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm kind of figuring things out as I go along here. Okay. I'm seeing the pineapple over here. I'm thinking, hmm. Can I drain pineapple? Already drained. Oh, man. You can't go wrong here. See, there's the, that's, there's the health food that you just put in there. That's that's our uh, fruit for the day, right? Yeah. <laughs> that cancels out the calories of the other stuff. Yeah. That's why I understand it. And it goes together pretty quick. Here's your good stuff. Your buttered up, sugared up pretzels. See, they're not stuck together. Exactly. You can break them up as long as, you know, as big or as little as you want them. That gives you a little crunch in there. Yeah. That's a the whole idea pineapple. of baking them. Now, do you let that set, or is it just good to go as soon as you get it done? You can eat it just as soon as I put it in a bowl. And I probably will. Man, you talk about quick. I mean, that came together real quick, but it really, it really has a rich look and smell to it. Somebody's going to think you spent a lot of time on that, dog. Yeah, just don't tell them any different. I won't tell them why. Just let them think I suffered fixing all this. <laughs> Try it. Have I got anything in my beard, Dolly? <laughs> oh my goodness. Those pineapples are popping out of there now. The cream cheese. You think it's all whipped cream, then you get some of the cream cheese in there and the crunchy and the pretzels. You know what? What? All right. I'm, if I had to choose between the two, I can't. Okay. That used to be my favorite, now those are my two favorites. You know what, this has been a wonderful Christmas season. We have, we so enjoyed you coming out and sharing your secrets with us. And by the way, it's a good time to talk about Facebook page. Check out our Facebook page and like it, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Also check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com for some shows you might have missed. You know what, that was a most excellent Christmas treat, both of them. Thank you so much. I thank the landowner for being here. <laughs> we thank you for coming out. <laughs> this is Dolly. Our new favorite dessert chef. You know what? It's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. And we wish you and yours a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Kinco Farm Fence Supplies, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions, harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. House warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office, try something different tonight. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come home to Stanford. Good Foods Co-op. Marksbury Farm Market. Weisenberger Mill.